Hi, in this lesson we're going to be talking about some of the more common networking commands you could use in Windows, and some of these commands will actually work in other operating systems such as Linux and Mac OS. Okay, so we're going to start with one of the all-time favorites here, ipconfig. So this is what you will use to get uh, various network information for your computer, such as your IP address, subnet mask, uh, default gateway, and so on. So if we just type in ipconfig, press enter, so we just get the basic information our DNS suffix, IPv6, IPv4, addresses, subnet mask, default gateway. But if we do the same thing, slash all, then you can see we get a lot more information here, such as the MAC address, DHCP information, lease information for your IP address, Win server, DNS server, and so on. So ipconfig is one of the more common networking commands, and you'll be using this uh, quite a bit in your IT career. Okay, let's clear the screen, CLS. Okay, another one that you'll use all the time is ping. So this is used to test the uh, connectivity between two devices. It doesn't have to be computers. If you have like a network printer uh, or any other device that uses an IP address on your network, you could try pinging it. But just keep in mind that ping might not be an option for everything because some devices or even some computers will block ping, you know, like for the Windows firewall if it's not enabled to let ICMP packets through, then you're not going to be able to ping it, and you might think the device is down when it's really not. Okay, so we're going to start by pinging a computer on our network here. So we got this ping win 10 here. This is another computer on the same network here. Okay, so to send out four packets here, and you'll get the information here. The summary sent four, received four, 0% uh, lost. Uh, Approximate round trip times in milliseconds. Okay, so we could also ping websites, for example, external resource. And you can tell that's the IP address or one of the IP addresses associated with Google. And then, of course, you could ping IP addresses themselves on your network. It's just like that. Okay, so next we're going to move on to path ping. So this command combines ping and trace route, which we'll be talking about next. So it's kind of like an all-in-one command you could use. So let's try it with the same Windows 10 computer here on the network. Okay, so we're coming from Win 11 Pro. That's this computer going to Win 10. So it's kind of doing a trace route here and pinging at the same time. So we'll wait till this is finished here. Okay, so the trace is complete. So it only took one hop since, you know, they're on the same network. So obviously it's not going to be a bunch of hops to uh, get to the destination here. So here's where it came from. And here's where it went to with the IP address. All right, now we're going to try trace route. So this sends ICMP ping echo request messages to the target host with an increasing time to live value. So this is used to identify and display the routers on network devices and hops that the packets traverse. So it's going to show you the steps that it's taking to get to the destination. So if we do something on the same network here that doesn't really have to go anywhere except to that other computer, you can see it's only one hop or one step to get to this other computer on the same network. But if we do it to something on a totally different network like Google. So it'll give you up to 30 hops before it fails. And if it does fail, you'll see where it fails during the process here. Okay, so 14 hops to get to Google and you can see that where it went to, through the Spectrum uh, Internet Service, and so on, all the way down to Google. Okay, let's clear the screen again. All right, so NS Lookup, Name Server Lookup. Uh, this is used to query DNS servers to obtain domain name or IP address mapping information. Available on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. All right, so first we're going to try it on Windows 10, this local computer here. Okay, so it found it, win10.localdomain. 
but you can see here it says server unknown. That's because there's no DNS server on this network that it's to use to find this other computer, but it was still able to find it. Okay, now let's use the IP address of this computer here. Now you can see it can't find it because it doesn't have any record of this IP address mapped to this Windows 10 computer. Okay, so now we're going to do it for Google. So let's do it without this first here. So you can see it still fails here because we don't have any DNS server to use to try and find the name or IP address associated with Google. But what you can do is add a domain server address after it so it knows to use this domain server. So this 8.8.8.8 .8 is actually Google's, one of Google's domain servers. So we're going to do the NS lookup for google.com using this DNS server. Okay, so using dns.google's name server here, it was able to find one of the IP addresses associated with google.com. All right. So next we have netstat, short for network statistics, another command that could be used with Windows, Linux, and Unix or Mac OS operating systems. So this is used to display information about network connections, routing tables, interface statistics, masquerade connections, and multicast memberships on a computer. So it's used to help diagnose networking issues, monitor network performance, and troubleshoot connectivity problems. Okay, so let's just try the command by itself first. So this shows us our active connections, the local address and the foreign address, and the state, establish, waiting. Okay, so we could use the dash an switch on it, so that'll display all active connections and listening ports. Okay, a lot more information here. Or we could use it with the R switch here to just show the routing table. So here's our active routes. No persistent routes. All right, let's move on to the next one here. Okay, so next we have the get MAC command. So that's used to find the MAC address of a network adapter, media access control. So that's the burned in hardware address that is unique to each network card. So if you have a network card on your computer, it'll have its own MAC address, which will be unique to that network card and not used anywhere else in the world, supposedly. So let's type this in real quick here. So here's the MAC address associated with this network card. So many manufacturers will have maybe the first three here unique to their company. And then these will be different for all of their network adapters. And then you could also get this uh, information from the IP config all command as well. All right. Okay, next we have route print. This will display the IP routing table on a computer. So the IP routing table is a set of rules that dictates how network traffic should be directed or routed between different network interfaces on the system. So it'll provide information about network destinations, net mass, gateways, and interface indexes. Okay, so here's the type of information you will get, the network destination, uh, the subnet mask, the gateway address, and the interface is going out on. So if we just do a route print, okay, let me just make this full screen for a second here so you get a better view of it here. So here's our active routes, network destinations, the mask, the gateway, what interface it's going through, and the metric. This is for IPv4, and then you have your IPv6 routing tables as well, okay? And then we could use dash four if we want to show just the IPv4 or dash six if you want just the IPv6, like so. Okay, clear the screen again. All right, and then finally we have ARP, so address resolution protocol, another uh, command you could use on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So this is used to display the ARP cache, which is a table that maps IP addresses to MAC addresses. So we just talked about MAC addresses, the uh, burned in address on your network card. So if you do ARP by itself, 
you'll see you can't do it because it wants a switch on it. So a common switch you could use is ARP-A to display the ARP cache. So here we're mapping the internet addresses to the MAC addresses and if they're dynamic or static. So in a situation like this where this is just a couple computers on one network, it's not going to have a whole lot of super useful information. But if you have a lot of computers talking to each other, then it'll come in uh, much more handy. Okay, so there is your overview of common networking commands in Windows. All right, thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.